Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. I'm spending some time here with my guy, Elvis, and the truth be told, you know, the first 20-something years of my career, I was a snake guy. I hardly kept any lizards. I wasn't really considering myself a lizard person at all. But now, over the last several years, I have fallen in love with lizards. Certainly, Elvis is an animal that is, uh, I mean, it literally is a pet dinosaur. He is crazy cool. He's uh, obviously trained to chase a ball around, can climb up my legs, just hang out with me. What an absolutely wonderful animal. So today, I just think I'm going to show all of my lizards off. You know, just do an all lizard vlog, if you guys don't mind. But in the meantime, I'm going to spend just a little quality time with my guy, Elvis. So guess what? Elvis literally had poop on his hand when I was holding him. I got poop on my face, on my shirt, look at all over the place. Uh, stinks, ah, uh, all right, back to being a snake guy. No, just kidding. <laughs> Elvis, you are absolutely amazing, but you're really stinky. I think it's time for a bath for him. Elvis definitely needs a little bit of a bath. So we'll just put him in here, let him chill out in the water a little bit, but he can come out whenever he wants. He doesn't have to stay in there. We just always leave him open. And like I said, he can hang out, he can come out, he can climb out, do whatever, but uh, he's stinky. He just kind of pooped in there, walked in and stuff like that. So good bath. Now let's get back to some other lizards. I started working with chameleons several years ago and I absolutely love them. Of course, I've got Karma, the big chameleon next door. And this is baby Karma here, uh, just a little several month old nosy be panther chameleon and I tell you what chameleons are some of the most rewarding animals to work with I mean they're so bizarre so absolutely incredible and I love the panther stuff for sure but I also work with other chameleons of course I have Raul the veil chameleon from Yemen unbelievably beautiful lizard I tell you what and these guys get pretty big this is a male of course the male gets that big old veil on it really beautiful colored really amazing animal then of course the Jackson's chameleon the males have these cool horns for sure and when I was a kid really Jackson Jackson's chameleons were the only chameleons that were in the pet trade. So you didn't see veiled chameleons or panther chameleons. They just weren't around. And Jackson's were the only one. Unfortunately, the majority of them are wild caught and they don't do all that well. They're a live bearing chameleon, which is pretty cool. I remember when I worked at the pet shop, we had several baby Jackson's chameleons. They come out so small, it's really hard to keep them alive, but they are unbelievable. And certainly one of the cooler looking chameleons. And of course we have guacamole, the Mellor's chameleon over here. I don't take him out too much, but he is an absolutely gorgeous animal really large chameleon. I love that thing and it blends in so well over this pond. It's just a great exhibit for sure. I love that dude and uh, he is pretty impressive. And of course there's my guy Chicken Strip here that definitely comes out that is a little bit feisty but he starts to calm down pretty good. We've been working with him a lot when it comes to kind of habituating kind of calming down and you can see already he's calming down. Of course he's an albino Nile monitor that I got just as a baby about two years ago and I love this dude to death. Again he's a little bit crazy crazy, but once he calms down, he is such a good animal. Uh, albino Nile monitors, I only know of this one in the world. I don't know if there's any other ones. There's been a couple before, but I think they passed along, so I don't know if there's another albino Nile or not. This could be the only one in the world, which is pretty cool. He's a male, and hopefully he can go with Abasuku, the black Nile monitor here in the future, but nevertheless, that is one impressive lizard. You guys know that we have merch at BarkTrekBoys.com. It's only available for the next five days or so. Uh, guess what? We have a special offer. This shirt, Elvis poop on it. $500 for this shirt only. I'm bar No, I'm just kidding with you. We're not selling this shirt. It's going in the washer and dryer. But we do have salt and pepper and salt merch. So go to barcheckboys.com and get you some. You can also get some Bad Choice Noah merch. Uh, go ahead, check it out. It's pretty cool. Only around for five more days. Ooh, doggy. That is one gorgeous lizard there. Again, I'll get into the New Caledonian geckos like the crested geckos here that are absolutely incredible. These are all Rachidactylus. This is the most common one, you know, which is a crested gecko. I often say, like, I think it's like top three pet lizards to be honest with you. You don't have to have heat. They don't need the UV light. They're very easy to take care of. So they're just a great lizard and they come in a lot of different kind of polymorphism paint jobs. This one is absolutely ridiculous. Then the next size up would kind of be the gargoyle geckos. I love these guys. And you guys know I'm working with all kinds of different colors and flavors. Definitely working on a big breeding group when it comes to the gargoyle geckos because I think they're absolutely amazing. And this one's got some great color, cool stripe patterning. I love the fact that these geckos can vocalize as well. So they make all kinds of crazy squeaking and squawking noises. It's absolutely incredible. Again, from the New Caledonian area. Then there's the Chihua gecko. It's unbelievable. Another New Caledonian animal, Arachidactylus. But look at the color on this animal. The greens are just crazy cool. Again, you could imagine walking through the forest and this thing is going to blend into a tree like you wouldn't believe. It just looks so mossy. What an unbelievably cool animal. I love Arachidactylus for sure. Then of course there's the 
Salicianus, which is the largest gecko species on the planet and the largest, of course, of the Rachidactylus. Again, from New Caledonia, which is basically an island chain that's about, if you were flying, about two and a half, three hours northeast of Australia. It's just a little island chain where all these amazing geckos come from. But Big Bertha, the lychee gecko, is definitely one of my favorites. We have a bunch of lychee geckos, and uh, she's only about half grown, so she's going to get about twice the size. There is no doubt that one of the animals that I have the biggest bond to, especially when it comes to a lizard, is Bella, my rhino iguana. She is such an amazing animal. And this is just a Missouri tortoise treat that I'm giving her right now. So it's a manufactured food that is a tortoise food that's really good for them. It's got all the nutrition and stuff like that. And she is such an, I mean, look at this animal. Can you believe her? I mean, rhino iguanas are truly amazing. And by the way, Elvis is running around right now and she is so jealous of Elvis. She's always like looking out, like giving him the eyeball. She does not like when Elvis is out at all because she wants to be the number one. But uh, she knows she's the number one to me. There's no doubt about that. Honey, I love you so much. And Diddy and Dixie are so certainly right behind Bella when it comes to absolutely amazing. I mean, they're getting so good about pets and coming down and hanging out. And Diddy will actually come out and hang on your hands for sure. But he loves superworms. There's no doubt about that. That's kind of our elixir to get him to do whatever we want. All we have to do is give him some superworms and he's happy to hang out. He'll come on our arms, uh, hang out on our shoulder. And here comes Dixie. Come on, girl. Come on. I'll give Diddy one so that he stays occupied. There you go, bud. And then I'll give Dixie. Come here, girl. Come here, that's a girl. They love their superworms, there's no doubt about it. But again, getting very similar to Bella now where they'll come out and they'll get pets and they'll kind of be completely habituated. There's only that left, buddy. <laughs> so they're really cool. And this is about the age that typically rhino iguanas do mellow out. You can see Diddy is getting so good. Dixie's just a little bit less habituated to handling, but Diddy is amazing. It's gonna be cool to have Bella and these two to have to come out all the time. And there's a huge enclosure gonna be made for Diddy and Dixie at the new Reptarium. Then there's Argamus Prime, the Argamus monitor. I mean, what an absolutely amazing animal this is right here. And if you guys remember when we first got him, it was handleable, but it would definitely go after you and go crazy. And with this big hiss that kind of bluff right now where he's going like, don't mess with me, I'm bluffing on you. You know, he's still telling me that uh, he's boss. But the fact is, is that again, you can see I'm not holding him. I, my hands are open. He's kind of feeling like he's okay. I'm not threatening him. I'm not restraining him. And uh, he's getting it. He's okay. That ball training and target training really takes takes away that food response that he has. But nevertheless, little training sessions like this are great. And he's actually a really, really beautiful animal. Gorgeous. This is about as big as he's gonna get, which is cool, because it's a big monitor, but not a huge monitor like Elvis. What a beauty he is. <laughs> of course, my boy, Toothless. The black dragon or Asian water monitor. He's uh, he's all covered in bedding right now because he was buried in himself. This animal is unbelievable. I mean, the habituation, the fact that it's so intelligent, loves people like you can't believe. When this thing gets five, six foot bigger than Elvis, it's gonna be an amazing ambassador because it really does love people. It has no fear of people at all. That is one of the coolest animals that I own. I always say Nova thinks that we're on display because he always comes up and watches us. He's definitely a people watch. You can see tilt his head like, what's up, daddy? Nova, of course, is a frilled dragon that I absolutely love to death. This is definitely an insanely cool animal. Not all frilled dragons are as tame as this guy is or habituated to handling. He loves people. Like I said, when we're open to the public or even the workers are just here, he always comes right to the front of the cage and just kind of looks out and just kind of checks us out and stuff like that. This is one cool animal, of course. We had a bunch of babies from daddy Nova this year. Leopard geckos are awesome as well. Really the first lizard that I started working with when I worked at BHB. You know, I had had lizards as pets and stuff like that, but leopard geckos are kind of what started me on the path of keeping a lot of lizards. And then of course, when we opened up the Reptarium, we needed a lot of lizards for animal ambassadors and I've absolutely fallen in love with them. We have a lot of really amazing leopard geckos. This guy's named Mac and I love him to death because he's so absolutely tame. Oh my gosh. Of course, this is Cosmo and Wanda. The Europlates frimbriatus, the big giant leaf tail geckos from Madagascar. These guys are ridiculous. I mean, those big eyes are incredible. They can see 300 times the light that we can see. So in night, and you can see she's about ready to jump right here. At night, she can actually see in full color. What amazing animals. And we've gotten eggs from Wanda before, and it looks like she's gearing up for another clutch. So we're pretty excited. Hopefully this time, we'll hatch some baby leaf tail geckos. Whoa! 
jumper, the Cuban Knight and all. It's absolutely incredible. Of course, I showed him just recently. This is a Nanol species from Cuba. That is absolutely incredible. And obviously his name is Jumper because this guy loves to jump. What a cool animal it is. It's such a cool, look at those eyes and that face. I mean, this looks like something that should be in the movie Beetlejuice or something like that. Absolutely incredible. Whoo, there you go, Jumper. See you later, buddy. This is actually a Madagascan day gecko. Absolutely incredible animals. Unfortunately, can't take these guys out because if I open the cage and try to get it out, it would be gone. I'd be chasing it all afternoon. But of course, uh, the Geico the gecko uh, made these guys famous as could be beautiful animals. Absolutely incredible. I mean, uh, I can't think of a more beautiful lizard for sure. Unfortunately, can't handle them, but they're great to look at in a habitat. Of course, we have Ubusuku, Ubusuku, no food. And we use this hook just as a habituation thing for her to understand that we're not gonna feed her. So once she knows that there's no food, she's actually extremely docile, really almost like Elvis-like. We can just pick her up and take her right out. And this is a long cry from where she was when we first got her back. Now we got her when she was a baby, but then we ended up putting her on loan with another lizard breeder. Uh, unfortunately, she didn't have any eggs, so he sent her back here for the reptarium. What an amazing animal. Again, a melanistic Nile monitor. I think the only one. I think there was another baby that popped up last summer over in West Africa, but I'm not sure what happened to it. I saw a picture of it and then it was gone. So this is either the only night black Nile monitor or there's another one floating around out there. Regardless, she's a female like I mentioned earlier. Chicken strip is a male, so hopefully one day they can make some double head for albino melanistic Niles. But what an amazingly beautiful and intelligent animal Abasuku is. Oh, and by the way, Abasuku is Zulu for night. Then of course there's the little dwarf monitors, the Aki monitors. These guys are just like Elvis and Abasuku, Argamas and Chicken Strip, but in a dwarf body. This is about half grown, so they get about twice the size. You can see a little bit more hyper, but we've been working with them a bunch to try to calm them down. Hopefully one day we can get these guys as docile as Elvis or Abasuku, but in a little dwarf body. I mean, they're so beautiful. And these guys are from the northern part of Australia. Of course, bearded dragons are another one of those pet animals that is absolutely incredible. I've been keeping bearded dragons on and off quite frankly for like 25 plus years so they were a lizard that I kept long before the reptarium that's for sure this is actually flaming hot Cheeto of course we have Fetty Wap as well so we just have two bearded dragons over at the reptarium but they're both really great habituated animals kids love it uh, you can come in and play with these guys and again if you're thinking about a pet lizard definitely bearded dragons are high up on the list of most awesome pet lizards there are and then there's Taz of course the Argentine blue tegu this guy is ridiculous I've always say he's like the sloth of the reptile world really he is lazy just lays around sleeps all day but he is unbelievably tame kids love him because they can come in and just mess with him all they want and he just is fine with it and of course he goes back in his cage i know and you guys all seen that as you can see there's a lot of things that we don't show all the time on the vlog just because there's so much and we're going to be adding even more with the expansion of the reptarium so we love lizards and that's all of my lizards basically in one video for you guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it can you do me a favor and click over here on another video there's an entire playlist over here as well on this side, the way Tazzy's going, you can hit that subscribe button. And while you're over there, can you turn the post notifications on? Remember to have a wonderful day and be kind to somebody. I promise me and Taz will see you tomorrow.